Today we are going to be looking at the iodine clock reaction. This is a reaction between potassium iodate and an acidified starch solution. The acid involved is sulfurous acid, a lower oxidation state than sulfuric acid. Notice that both of our solutions are colorless and the starch is very slightly cloudy, but the potassium iodate is clear. Ideally, we would have a clear starch solution, but soluble starch isn't completely soluble and sometimes there's a slight cloudiness to it. This reaction has a rather complex mechanism. In beaker one, we just have the potassium iodate dissolved in water. In beaker two, we have sodium hydrogen sulfite, sulfuric acid, and starch. So in beaker two, there's a combination of this hydrogen sulfite and uh, sulfuric acid. And they're going to actually form an equilibrium where we form some um, sulfurous acid, H2SO3, and sodium sulfate. The sodium sulfate isn't really involved in the reaction. So um, the iodate, once the two beakers are mixed, is going to be reacting with the, um, hydro with the sulfurous acid. When it does this, it's going to form potassium iodide and some sulfuric acid. It will also react with this uh, sulfuric acid um, and the newly formed potassium iodide to form some iodine. Now iodine is usually kind of a brownish color. Um, you might be able to find this in the pharmacy um, and you would put it on cuts as a disinfectant. This is what's going to form our final complex if you look at the last equation. When I mix it with starch, the complex is a dark blue-black color. But the iodine can also react with the sulfurous acid that is still in the beaker. So as long as there's sulfurous acid, it's going to be pulled back apart into two iodide ions. These iodide ions are colorless. So as long as there's sulfurous acid present, everything will remain colorless. Only when we've used up all of the sulfurous acid will we have enough iodine to react with the starch and form the blue-black color. This is going to be our baseline reaction. We're going to look at this reaction under different conditions, including different temperatures and different concentrations. We're starting with a 0 0.006 molar potassium iodate solution and a 0.16 millimolar uh, sulfurous acid solution in starch. The millimolar means that this is actually 0 0.00016 molar sulfurous acid. The temperature is 21.4 degrees Celsius. Now we're going to look at a reaction where we've diluted the potassium iodate. The concentration is now 0 0.002 molar, which is about one third of what it was before. We are still working at room temperature. Now we'll look at a reaction with a more concentrated version of the potassium iodate. In this case, the concentration of the potassium iodate is 0 0.010 molar, or not quite double our original concentration. Again, still working at room temperature. We can also adjust the concentration of the sulfurous acid and starch solution. In this case, the concentration is higher at 0.4 millimolar. The concentration of the potassium iodate is back to the original concentration. Now let's look at the temperature effect on the rate of the reaction. The temperatures of these solutions are now 46.5 degrees Celsius. Of course, they're cooling a little bit, so it's going to be a little under that when I mix them.
you'll notice that the temperature change caused the color change also to be different. And this is because higher reaction conditions were distorting the shapes of some of the molecules. Now let's look at our reaction under cold condition. These beakers have been sitting in an ice bath and are at about two degrees Celsius. 